What up is Marcus Dynasty World Dads, and if you didn't watch the previous video, we're going to be going through 6 through 10 in Dynasty Rookie ADP. We're going to be going through where they are at startup. Would we rather have some other players ahead of them or behind them uh, in startup? So we're going to be comparing them to some of these others uh, in ADP here. Uh, and so if, again, if you missed 1 through 5, go to the other video. All right, let's get to it. We're going to be going through number six. It is Chris Olave, which is not my number six prospect. Um, but yes, they traded up and the Saints ended up getting Chris Olave. And he's right now uh, number six in ADP. And he is 74.8. So where does he lie when it comes to other wide receivers right around that area? It's Keenan Allen. It's Devontae Smith territory. It's Marquise Brown. It's Jamison Williams. And majority of those players, uh, like especially uh, Jamison Williams and, and Devontae Smith, I have not significantly, but I have them definitely over Chris Olave. Chris Olave is a great uh, route runner and catch. Uh, basically, uh, he's got great hands. <laughs> but his run after the catch is what we call non-existent. He is a catch and fall down type of player. I mean, if somebody blows a little bit too uh, heavy of a wind on him, which there's not too much wind in the uh, Saints Dome there, uh, then he will fall over. Like, it is just incredible of how bad he is uh, run after catch here. And I even look at some of the other wide receivers, Elijah Moore. I like Elijah Moore better than him, and he's going 70 picks behind him. Uh, Rashad Bateman, Amari Cooper, those are all arguable, arguably players that I would have, uh, depending on the situation contender. Uh, I potentially have them over Chris Olave. I think Chris Olave is somewhat of a risk because you have a guy that cannot create after the catch. And so he is not my 106. We're going to go to what, who my 106 would be in this situation. It would be Jamison Williams. Uh, Jamison Williams goes to Detroit. He has an ADP of 76.1 little bit just slightly behind Chris Olave. And again, I would the the upside of Jamison Williams. The downside is that he ends up battling with injuries and comes back from his ATL maybe slightly too early and ends up having hamstring issues or does not get back into shape enough, which is can happen a ton. Uh, we see some of these athletes try to rush back because now the timeline is not 12 months anymore. It's now like eight, nine months. They're trying to push these athletes further and further back or further, further uh, closer into game field action here. And so Jamison Williams, I'm just going to know that his rookie year could be a little bit rough, but he has the upside of being the best wide receiver in this draft class. And so that is why I am taking Jamison Williams over him. At, and, and so if I had to choose, that's who I'm having. And even uh, even that, I'm having Devontae Smith over him. I'm having probably because some of the other wide receivers in that area. Jamison Williams does still pose a risk here. Um, but in rebuilds, Jamison Williams is perfect because, I mean, you're talking about a guy that is probably not going to help you a ton this year, uh, but has the upside potential. And Detroit traded into it uh, with, of course, my Vikings. Uh, but he's 21 years old, and we saw that 6'2", 190-pound frame, how quick and fast. I mean, he was lightning fast. and He has that kind of Justin Jefferson slim build to him. And so... Uh, it, I mean, he, he looks very appetizing at that 107. 108, wait, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Yeah, I just want to make sure. Kenny Pickett. <laughs> Kenny Pickett. He's 24 years old already. I mean, we're talking about a guy who's older than a lot of the players that were coming out last year, and I just don't get it. I mean, his ADP is 85.5 in Superflex. Let's go through some other quarterbacks. Kirk Cousins. Yes, Kirk Cousins, 33. I am taking Kirk Cousins. I'm taking the guy that's going to be a, a high-end QB2 versus a guy that I have no idea. Like, I, well, I don't necessarily have no idea, but I have, I've watched the tape, and I, Kenny Pickett does not impress me to the point where I'm like, man, I got to take him over some of these other players. And, and I look at even at the other quarterbacks. Let's Man, there's not that many quarterbacks that are drafted around that area. Oh, let's go up a little bit. Tom Brady, I mean, you're going to get a year out of Tom Brady. Uh, Zach Wilson is... Uh, the, the two quarterbacks ahead. I mean, there there are not many quarterbacks that are kind of drafted into this darkness zone. Uh, let's go Ryan Tannehill, uh, Jameis Mills. Da, da, I would say Jameis Mills, <laughs> Jameis Winston, Davis Mills. So I mean, some of the wide receivers or some of the players, quarterbacks around that area are just you're kind of in a dead zone. I'd rather have Kirk Cousins, but if Kirk Cousins get taken, you're probably going to have to go a different position. That's why I like going other positions. I like, that's why I like going quarterbacks early because you get into this area and it starts getting ugly super quick. Um, if you look at other players around that area, we're looking at Amari Cooper, Rashad Bateman, Elijah Moore. Uh, again, Jamison Williams not too far ahead of that as well. Uh, even players like Sky Moore, uh, Amon Ross St. Brown, uh, Darnell Mooney, my Mooney love. Like These are players that I would rather have than uh, Kenny Pickett in Superflex uh, easily. 
easily in my opinion. I, I think I'm more of a Kenny Pickett hater than I am a Drake London because I actually don't like Kenny Pickett as a prospect. Drake London, I do. I just think that he's being way, way overhyped and way overdrafted at this point. Number eight is going to be James Cook. James Cook, 87.1. I think it's too early here. I understand the second round draft capital, but Devin Singletary is going to be the run in the tackles type of guy. I mean, he was the number one running back for the final four weeks. I think he's going to be the first and second down running back. You may get some Zach Moss sightings, but I'm not sure what you're going to get exactly get from him. Uh, but James Cook is going to be a running back that is going to be overdrafted. I mean, you look at some of the other players it, around that area, uh, Clyde Edwards-Alaire, which I would rather have Clyde Edwards-Alaire in his first round draft capital and a much clearer path uh, to starting time, uh, A.J. Dillon, who, Elijah Mitchell, both players I would rather have. Elijah Mitchell should be the starting for, running back for San Francisco. A.J. Dillon was going, is going to be a top 24 running back this year. Uh, he was last year, which means he's going to be this year because I think they're going to even rely on him more. And speaking of more, <laughs> that was not a transition cut that I was trying to go to, but we are going to talk about uh, Sky Moore. Sky Moore, Christian Watson. Nine, number nine, number 10. We're going to kind of go right through both of these here because their ADPs are so close. You have one at 80 to 9.8. We're just going to round that to 90. And you have one that is 91 even. So Sky Moore is at 90. There's Krishan, Krishan, Christian Watson is at 91. Both are players that have, they're opposite. And kind of, and Christian Watson is the super big athlete, raw. Sky Moore is 5'10, 195. So if Sky Moore, 5'10, 195. Think route running, think, uh, not even you came to. I'm trying to think of like a good example of him. He's he's kind of even more. He's he's like Garrett Wilson, but not as polished as Garrett Wilson. So think just guy more is a a good going Elijah Morris uh, again, kind of that smaller framed, going to be a lot around in the middle there. They they're going to try to probably use him in the Tyreek role. But he's just not as fast as Tyreek. No one is as fast as Tyreek. And then Christian Watson, 6'5", 6'4"-ish, 200 pounds. And we're talking about a guy who basically tested like Chase Claypool and Chase Claypool and um, Megatron. I mean, the, the guy's RAS score was through the roof. Um, you have guys 90 and 91. Uh, again, this is where I, ha I have them ahead of James Cook here. Uh, well, let's look at some of the players that are right around that level. Mike Williams. I'd rather have Mike Williams. Cortland Sutton, that's a tough one because I think Cortland Sutton is, I think Jerry Judy is the alpha in that that area, but I think it's close. Um, then you have Brandon Ayuk. I'd rather have the rookies over Brandon Ayuk uh, here. And then you have DeAndre Hopkins, who I'm taking DeAndre Hopkins in Dynasty because he's still, I, I understand, he's getting to the point where he could fall off the cliff. But at 30 years old and a guy that could have a couple more top seasons, I am taking DeAndre Hopkins Um uh, maybe, maybe some of those uh, PEDs helped him out. Uh, then we, we get to Gabriel Davis and Hunter Renfro, and uh, we start getting into some of the players that, of course, I would rather have these rookies ahead of them. So I think these rookies are placed pretty well uh, through there. I mean, when you have only one or two players that I would rather have, at least wide receiver-wise, ahead of these rookies, I think they're placed... They're, they're really boom guys. I mean, they're boomer bust guys. These, these guys... The draft capital says that they're going to be well involved into these two amazing uh, target target opening office offenses, and so I think that this is going to be a, a very hard to gauge where some of these these two could go. These two could be steals of the draft. They also could end up being it could be the Alan Lazard and it could be the Juju Smith Schuster. So uh, or Pat Mahomes just ends up throwing it to Travis Kelsey until Travis Kelsey can't move anymore, <laughs> which could be a possibility. Or God forbid, maybe they even throw it to Clyde Edwards Lair out of the backfield. Oh, oh my goodness, could they do that? <laughs> so again, that's the the first ten. We get six or ten. We're gonna keep going through this uh, and where I have some of these rankings and where we have them compared to ADP. So if you're new to the channel, please like, please subscribe. Peace out. We'll see you tomorrow.